Hi, my name is Keith Jackson, and you're watching Shout. Hi, I'm Keith Jackson, and this is Shout. I'm with Pastor Ray Mabian this morning, and we just want to kind of vibe a little bit about some of the things that, you know, that we're seeing in men's ministry and then men in general. Some of the things that are kind of disturbing, you know. Uh, Pastor Ray, mm -hmm. I... Uh, uh, I had the opportunity to preach uh, uh, at the beginning of the month at the City Union Mission. And one of the things that really kind of bothered me was mm -hmm. um, at the, as I did the altar call, I noticed that the men were just kind of sitting there. And I just, I, I mentioned to them, I said, you know, many of you are in need of something. Mm -hmm. You're in need of, and I actually, at, at one time I asked them to raise their hand if you're mm -hmm. in need of healing, if you're in need of a job, if you're in need of uh, shelter if you're in need of deliverance. Yeah, yeah. And um, many of them raised their hand, mm -hmm. you know, but then when, we, when the altar call comes, it was very disturbing that hardly no one got up. Gotcha. You know, and I used to kind of take those things personal, like, well, you didn't preach, you know, mm -hmm. but you, what I know, I know what God gave me to preach, mm -hmm. I preached that. But then when you just sit there, mm -hmm. what's going on inside where the one that can give you the healing, that can supply all your needs, <laughs> is sitting there with open arms. And I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about God Almighty. I'm right. talking about Christ Jesus, who hung, bled, and died for those times, for such a time as that, where you need healing, or you need deliverance, or you need shelter, or you need food, or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's there to meet your needs, but they won't come. Yeah. They won't come. That's the hardest thing. You know, and a lot of times the word goes out with power. Mm -hmm. um, the next step is for someone to actually receive it. And sometimes it's later on that they may that day or that night that they may cry out to the Lord and not, you know, uh, cause the word never goes out void. Right. Right. And right. so the blessing of it going forward changes things. But you know, in talking about men in general, it's very hard for them to just submit to what God wants in their lives. Yeah, exactly. We've seen it in our church. We've seen it in our men's ministries. Um, it's just very difficult for men to hear the truth and then abide by that truth that they know they need to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, a, I think, a, a nature within us that's slightly rebellious, but we want to do what we want to do. Right, right. Instead of submission unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Good point. Submission. Men think that that word submission or surrender as mm -hmm. a weak thing. You know, we've been taught all of our life, you don't surrender in sports, you don't, you mm -hmm. know, submit, you know, uh, life in general. You know, you, you're trying to fight to be on top. You know, but God turns that stuff upside down. That mm -hmm. submission in him is victory. That's right. You know? That's the key thing. You know, I've been, the Lord put on my heart to work on a book and start dealing with men coming out of their past issues and being able to, 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 to stand firm on the word of God yeah. and, and move into that next place and calling the God is calling their life. You know, I never will forget working with the National Center for Fathering and we con contracted with the Kansas City Chiefs and we went in to talk to them about fatherhood and manhood right. um, because uh, the director of pro player development said, we're having uh, these, 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 these young men are having all these babies out of wedlock mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they're not understanding um, the process of respecting a woman or being a husband or living this life right. as they need to. And you know, you could be the greatest athlete and have all this uh, money or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, but your, your, your personal life is so messed up right. and so out of touch. And going there and talking with them, uh, there were some of them that didn't want to hear the truth. Right. And literally, when we started talking, they, they asked the question, is this mandatory? Because some of their meetings are mandatory. They said, well, right. no, it's not mandatory, but a lot of you all need it. Uh -huh. And they started getting up and walking out. Uh, wow. uh, and so it took some strong character guys like, Tony Richardson mm -hmm. and uh, Eddie Kennison that mm -hmm. went and grabbed some guys literally and brought them back in there wow. and told them, no, no, you need this mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. And see, praise God for the strong men right. that'll go grab my brother. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I need it and I'm glad that I'm in here, but mm -hmm. no, I'm not going to let my brother mm -hmm. and my, my brother's keeper right. walk out of that door when I know the life that you're living. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have you come on back in here and get this truth and ask some questions and get in field with the reality of who you are, where you are, and how you can grow from there. But you know, that brings up a, another point too. Uh, those guys went back and, and they grabbed those guys and said, you need this. They could see the character of, of those men and it wasn't good. Mm -hmm. Just like that they stand strong and united on the field, 
they needed to be strong and united in their in their personal lives in the locker room because we've seen before where with teams that that are galvanized together in a in a in a personal or a spiritual yes. way it's hard to defeat them very true when they come together in that way it's hard to de mm -hmm. to defeat them in that way so as as Kennison and uh tony rich was uh bringing those guys together well they're bringing them together in more ways than that they really realize very true you know that was huge yeah that that whole concept of team mm -hmm. that they live by, that they function by, uh, was huge when you start talking about breaking down your life and where you are. And there was a, a book that we had, Quenching the Father Thirst. Okay. And it's really the, the, the fact that you may not have had the father that you needed in your life. Mm -hmm. Please don't become that guy for your children. Right, right. That, 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 that void mm -hmm. of darkness that, that, that was created maybe by not having a father, not having a, an example of a man that's by you. And that's one of the things I'm gonna talk about in that book is a, an example of a real man. What does that look like? What does it mean? When did I become a man? That was one right. of the questions we asked. Yeah. When did you become a man? Mm -hmm. um, we can throw that out and, and have people ponder that in their hearts and minds right now. Is it when I had a child? You know, is it when I moved out of my parents' house and my mother's house? No, when did you really become a man and take accountability for who you are mm -hmm. as a person? Yeah, you know, and th when we were talking about this before, some time ago, um, that, I began to ponder that myself, you mm -hmm. know, well, when did I become a man? What is a man? You know, those questions come to me. Mm -hmm. And then what I, what I came up in my heart and what, what came to me was when I began to fear the Lord, mm. when I that's began good. to fear the Lord, that's mm -hmm. when I became a man, but not the man that the world sees. Mm -hmm. But when you begin to fear the Lord and understand who he is, mm -hmm. and now you reverence him for mm -hmm. the God that he is, God almighty, you know, the great I am. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, okay, now I understand who he is mm -hmm. and the power thereof. Yes, sir. Now I, I, I fear him and, and not the same way as a horror movie or whatever, right. but just the reverence who he is. Right. And the power, you know. Yes, sir. That's you know, huge. Within, you know, but the, then the, the, the blessed part is as I surrender to him, he gives me that power. Yes, sir. He gives me. That's an awesome thing. It that is. just hit me. Just hit mm -hmm. me. That's an awesome thing that when he, when I surrender to him, he gives me that power. That same power that he used to raise Christ from the dead mm -hmm. is now in me. Yes, sir. But I have to tap into the power mm -hmm. that he gives me. Now, I don't possess the power. Right. But he uses that power to work in me. Exactly. Yeah. And there's the surrender then brings mm -hmm. strength. Yes. Out of my surrender to say this is who I'm called to be, and that's the blessing each man's answer is going to be a little different of when I became a man. Mm -hmm. um, but the, eventually it will lead to the surrender of what Christ has for my life. And, you know, for me, it was taking accountability yeah. um, uh, in my actions, in my thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I couldn't blame this on anybody else. I couldn't put this on right. anybody else. It was, you know what, I, I need to be my own man. Mm -hmm. I need to handle business like I, sh I need to. And um, I need to, to be accountable right. to this word of God. Mm -hmm and the truth that's in it mm -hmm. and then live that truth out mm -hmm. so i don't i don't you know, there's no more games right. and you know it really comes to a point that you can't you can't play a game with god you can't right. shuck and jive right. him right. Exactly. either i'm following what i need to do or i'm going astray and that's mm -hmm. where a lot of men today need to just be surrendered and hey if you have a men's ministry in your church support that men's ministry right not uh, by just word, but in action, in mm -hmm. deed, in showing up, mm -hmm. in being a part of it. Before I was ever over men's ministry, when I was just a pastor in our church, I was a part of men's ministry. Right, exactly. Uh, because it meant a lot in my life. Mm -hmm. That was the first ministry that I joined also. Yes, you sir. Know, I wasn't, I was doing things in the media ministry, you know, being a part of that and on staff, you know, part time there. But the only ministry that I felt led to be a part of was the men's ministry. And I mean, God has placed that in me from some time ago. And he just uh, brought that back to me over the last year or so. He's like, this wasn't something that just happened. And he took me back in my mind. And I was just in my meditation time, my reflection time. I was like, wow, I was even sharing with my wife, my wife that uh, this just didn't happen. Mm -hmm. He took me back to where all this began, you know, that he That's had good. placed men's ministry on my heart. You know, mm -hmm. to be able to work with men, to be able to share with men. I mean, we got to, you know, we don't want to open up and share our hurts and our pains. And that's what Shout is all about, people, is, is about tearing down walls, about uh, seeking Christ that's for good. what uh, only he can give to you. Because the walls that we build up keep 
our, our, our loved ones out, our wives, our children, our community, our church, everybody keeps everything out. But more importantly, it keeps Christ out. And when you think about, you know, when Christ hung, bled, and died on the cross at Calvary, the one thing that he did was at the end, he gave up his spirit. And then the veil was ripped in two. That allowed us to come into the presence of the Almighty God. That we didn't have to have the priest, the, the high priest to do that. Jesus is that high priest. But he allowed that to happen, that we would come in. That he would be able, we would be able to come into the presence of the Almighty God to pray for ourselves, to seek uh, healing, to seek whatever it is that we need. And that's what Christ is desiring to do with us. With that wall coming down, he comes in. That wall keeps things in. He wants to get out, but he also wants to come in. That's what shout is about. Tearing down that wall, turning back your hearts to your heavenly father, living a life that is pleasing to him. Yeah. <clears throat> Praise God that he loves us enough yeah. to be able to pour out and, and, and wait on us to receive him. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he died for us to have that strength and to have that understanding and to have that knowledge yeah. and just receive him as savior mm -hmm. um, changes everything. Yes. Um, there's that point that I can live this life according to the scriptures. And uh, it's so much easier to surrender yeah. than to keep fighting. Yeah. God's going to win. You uh -huh. want him to. Uh -huh. You want him to be able to take over. What does scripture say about kicking against the pricks? Come on now. <laughs> you got you got to go ahead uh -huh. and just surrender. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because, you know, you're going to bow later if you don't bow now. Exactly. That's just that's just yeah. it. Yeah. And praise God that he loves us enough. Mm -hmm. And see, the, the fact that, that you have a, an understanding and a knowledge and you want to live for Christ, mm -hmm. um, so even if you're not all the way there, you know where you need to be or how you need to be there. That's when you connect with your men's ministry. That's when you go and talk with your pastor or a leader mm -hmm. and just say, you know what, I'm going to be there. Yeah. I'm going to get connected. Not only am I going to be in church and I'm not going to follow my wife or my old lady to church, <laughs> I'm going to lead yeah. and go to church and yeah. Get up and prepare and do what I'm supposed to do. Pastor Ray, you talk about uh, not following your, your wife, but when things are in order, in God's mm -hmm. order, see, I'm not saying that because women are head of household mm -hmm. in whatever situation that mm -hmm. they find themselves in, God does bless. Exactly. But when things are in God's order, mm -hmm. there's blessings. That's true. There's tremendous blessings. And that's where men have to step up and receive the blessing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the enemy, you know, uh, what's the old saying? Uh, uh, you cut the head off, right? Everything else going to fall. Everything's displaced. Everything's displaced. That's true, and that's what he's going after in society. Mm -hmm. The men that are uh, trying to be, you know, we, things come against us. Things yes, will sir. come against us, but we have to stay on our knees in our Bible, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 sharpening, you know, uh, iron sharpens iron. Exactly. So one man sharpens another, mm -hmm. and that's what the men's ministry is all about. Not just in our church, but just in in any men's church, uh, uh, men's ministry. That's what it should be about. When men are hurt, Pastor Ray, when we did the uh, uh, the thing not too long ago, and it was the four corners, and the song that we used was uh, I, need "I Need You, You, you mm -hmm. Need Me," uh, Hezekiah Walker. Yes, sir. That song meant so much because men were hurting. That's true. But they won't say that they're hurting. No. But when we did that, what happened? Mm -hmm. They responded. We did that four corners, mm -hmm. and we went over. We did. And they didn't want to wouldn't shut up. They, <laughs> they wouldn't shut up, would they? No, they did. And they, they came out, too. Uh-huh. Came out. It was one of the more powerful ones that we've done this year. Very true. Because the, the men, you know, they once they got going, mm -hmm. they didn't want to stop talking. It's true. And, and it's, a, it's a matter of just getting them to open up. Which is that process of shouting. Exactly. Of releasing, of mm -hmm. letting go, of finally talking about my circumstances. Where else are you going to do that? Mm -hmm. There is no other place yeah. that you can be able to really talk to men and talk about your issues and talk about things that other men mm -hmm. can identify with. There's nothing better in those right. groups than seeing two men connect and say, hey, brother, I made it through mm -hmm. what you're going through right, mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. That's and, huge. And like when, when God gave me the concept of shout, he showed me all men are shouting. Yes. But no one hears them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? He said, because they're shouting from within. Mm. The wall has wow. to come down. That's they're awesome. all shouting from within and no one is hearing them. Until they shout and get it all out, then he can't come in. God can do powerful things, but he wants you to want him. Bring the wall down. Mm -hmm. Help. You know, he will help you bring that wall down so he can come in and transform your life mm -hmm. to make you the man that God created you to be in the beginning. Amen. Yeah. 
Awesome. Yeah. That's what he's looking for. God is looking for that, and he pulls that out of us so mm -hmm. we can be able to see and know and have the clarity that I can finally live for him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, Pastor Ray, um, you know, with, with the whole shout movement, the thing that, you know, you've been in it with me from day one. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what we're desiring to do is just uh, allow men to see that need for Christ in their lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've, you've tried to do everything yourself. You've gone your own way. You've uh, probably uh, gone into some areas that where you feel like that you can't be forgiven or God won't forgive you. You've messed up in such a way that um, there's no way God can, is going to forgive you. But you got to remember something. Christ hung, bled, and died while you were yet still a sinner. He didn't tell you to get it right first, and then he would die. He already did it mm -hmm. because he knew at some point you're going to come to him, and the provisions are already made for you to spend eternity with him, to spend eternity with the Father and the Son. That's, that's a powerful thing to think about. That's a powerful thing to think about that Christ did it while you were yet still a sinner. He did it while I was a sinner. And one of the things, Pastor Ray, that we have to realize is <coughs> we've made this statement so broad. Mm -hmm. He died for our sins. Right. You got to understand he died for my sins. You got to make it personal That's because right. a relationship with Christ, Christianity is a personal relationship. That's right. It's about my life with Christ. It's not about the pastor. Right. It's not about what you did versus me. It's about what I do in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. That's what it's all about. My personal relationship mm -hmm. with him, my Lord and Savior. Yes. And, and we, we got to look at the cross. And when we look at it in that way and begin to see it a different, in, in that way as a personal thing, you think about shout comes from uh, 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 Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. Also, the thing that I deal with, that's the, the follow up to shout is the right. focus group. Mm -hmm. Fixed on Christ's ultimate sacrifice. That's right. That's what focus means. That's right. Okay. And when you think about that, you got to be fixed and focused mm -hmm. on what he did for you. The beating that he took for you that's on that right. cross. He did it for you. That's right. He did it for me. Make it personal. That's right. Make it personal. That's the thing that the Lord looks for out of us. And, you know, when you think about the relationship that God wants mm -hmm. um, out of us and, and, and the, the reality of how he needs us to function in his life you know taking back to the relationship he had with with adam when he first created man and that 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 concept of teaching and instilling into him that fatherly uh attachment yeah. to his son that he was being able to impart into him and show him how to function and what to do and and and, and gave him leeway and then you know as soon as it's time for the woman to come forth as soon as it's time for eve to be manifested to be a helpmate to to, to adam here comes the enemy. Yeah. We have an adversary yeah. that fights against the family unit, that yeah. fights to tear us down and to keep us from ever overcoming or doing what God's per intended purpose yeah. is for our lives. Amen. We're going to be uh, be right back. We need to take a little break here, but uh, stay tuned. We're going to, something Pastor Ray just said, just uh, the Lord just to key in on that as a thought that I have. We'll be right back. Keith Jackson Ministries is the proud sponsor of the Shout Christian Talk Show for Men and the Shout Magazine. Read stories on how men experience their Shout moment. To make a donation or order a copy of Shout Magazine, go to KeithJacksonMen.com. That's KeithJacksonMin.com. We're back again with uh, Pastor Ray Mabian, and uh, we're just kind of uh, talking a little bit about men's ministry and some of the, mm -hmm. the, the do's and don'ts and why men won't come to, uh, to church, won't come to Christ, won't surrender. And uh, Pastor Ray, when you were, uh, before we went to the break there, uh, you were touching on something uh, uh, about Adam being a father, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and what, what came to me was the affirmation, mm -hmm. the affirmation of a father, mm -hmm. you know, to his son. Mm -hmm. You know, and as I look at the Bible, I mean, there was no greater affirmation than the father to the son. Mm -hmm. When the Lord had said, this is my son who I'm well pleased. Yes, sir. Who I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a tremendous affirmation, mm -hmm. you know, from God Almighty to the son. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, so many of us don't have that and never had that, that right. affirmation 
of mm -hmm. someone saying, you know, hey, you know, good job, son. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you failed on the on the on the practice field or right. the, the the playing field or in the classroom or whatever, you know, hey, you gave it your best, you gave it your all. Yeah. Keep going, keep pushing. You know, God doesn't do that. When we make a mistake, He doesn't uh, beat us down. Right. He encourages us. Mm -hmm. Hey, get up. Let's let's keep going. You're gonna make mm -hmm. it. You're gonna make it. And when you don't have that that affirmation from someone. Mm -hmm. Power, uh, a male figure in your life, it, it can it can take you down some crazy paths. It really can. Yeah. It's it's needed. You know, um, man, that's the that's the the sonship piece of being able to affirm, uh, you know, as a father, your son, you know, and mm -hmm. and impart into into them and help them to understand um, that it's okay or whatever situation or circumstance that they're going through. Mm -hmm. um, that that affirmation is so much needed and. Sometimes it takes the Heavenly Father to affirm right. that within us. And then we should take that standard and carry it to our seed exactly. to be able to bring that life and affirmation. Um, you know, I, I thought back to a time in the eighth grade when I had a wrestling match. And that was the first year I ever wrestled. And I lost badly, you know. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, it was me leaving there with my father that made the difference. And yeah. see... What he said after I lost that horrible match, what I just happen to think about right now, is you know what? You did your best. And as big as that guy was, I don't know if anybody could have beat him, yeah. you know. Well, it, it put it in perspective that it's okay. Yeah. Something that small right. helped me not to dwell yeah. there, but it's like work harder to be better at what you can do. Yeah. Hey, that guy may have been wrestling for years. This is your first year trying to figure this thing out. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's you learning in this process those life lessons right, right. Um, that are so huge. And that's that relationship that God had with Adam mm -hmm. in instituting, understanding, and showing him how to function in this world, how to ask questions and live this life and be able to see his will done. Yeah, yeah. Um, so many men try to live vicariously through their sons. Either, mm -hmm. either they were great athletes or wanted to be a great athlete, mm -hmm. but they're trying to get their sons or whatever to do that. Yes. I had a friend of mine that uh, he was telling me a lot of the things about his son. Oh, he, he can't do this, he can't do that, and I've been on him about this. And, and I was just sitting there listening to what he said, and I just, I just said, hey, man, for every one bad thing that mm -hmm. you criticize him from, try to give him five good things that mm -hmm. he did. Yes, what? Sir. He's like, what? And I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, instead of beating him down, that you're, you're kind of breaking his spirit. Yes. You know, help him to see that, hey, you're yeah. going to do better next time or whatever. Encourage right. him some good things. What did he do on that court right. that were good? Mm -hmm. You didn't say any one thing about that he did anything good. Mm -hmm. But you've been telling me he's a good ball player. Right. So he had to do something good. Mm -hmm. You know, so for every one thing that you knock him down, try to give him five good ones. That's great. You know, because really, if you can do that, they're more receptive of those other things. Hey, man, you played great. You did this. You did that and everything. But I was kind of seeing something that you might want to try this about. It's, the, it's okay. Praise God. This is something that my wife and my sister-in-law, along with I was talking about uh, not too long ago. The presentation. Mm -hmm. Pastor Ray. I fix you a steak meal mm. and I just throw it all over the plate. I mean, it could be a, the best steak in the world, mm -hmm. but if it's all over the plate and the vegetables are here and the baked potato is just kind of mm. thrown on there and everything, mm -hmm. but then I give you another uh, plate and it's fixed nicely, mm -hmm. appetizing to the eye. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Which one are you going to take? I want the one that's appetizing. That is pleasing that's to the order. eye, right? But it's the same thing. Same food, but you want right. the thing that's in order. Right. Same. You can give somebody the message, mm. the word of God. Yeah. But how you present it. Yeah. Is gonna make all the difference in that's the world. Huge. Yes, sir. You gonna beat them over the head with the Bible? Mm. You did this. You did that. You should. You call yourself a Christian? Blah blah blah. Right. But then when you present it in a way that is what sweet. Right. Tasteful. If they can hear it. Uh huh. Yeah. They can accept it. We supposed to be what salt, aren't we? We are. What does salt do? Right. Flavor. It flavors it. Flavor. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need that That's flavor. Good. Bring it in with that flavor. You know, the word of God mm -hmm. with that flavor. We got to quit beating people over the head with the Bible. Right. When did Christ do that? Exactly. Everybody that he, he ministered to, he did it in love. He did. Only ones that I see in the Bible, and I could be wrong, I've been wrong, but every place that I see in the Bible, 
only one he came against with really was the religious sect, the That's Pharisees, right. the Sadducees, the That's ones true. that should have known who he was. Right. Standing right before him, the Savior. Exactly. And they but couldn't they see it. Always attacked him. Even they, what are you doing healing on the Sabbath? Yeah. You can't rejoice in the fact that someone got healed. Right. You're trying to go into a doctrinal process and tear down yeah. the blessing that someone received. Right, that right. doesn't make any sense. Years ago, I'm coaching my son's basketball team, and mm -hmm. I told the parents, I'm not going to push anything on your children. I said, but I'm a Christian. Yeah. I said, so I, if it's okay, I want to pray with them before and after practice. Mm -hmm. No one objected. Mm -hmm. The kids got to the point where, in the beginning, they were standoffish. But then we got mid-season, and they were raising their hand. Coach, can I pray? Can I pray? Yeah, that's good. We won a game one day. I prayed with the kids. A gentleman came up to me and said, you know, that was really good you prayed with those kids, but it's, you had your hat on. You should have took your hat off. Wow. And I just kind of, I bit my tongue. Right. But I'm like, what was more important? I just exactly. said to myself, what was more important that I, these kids prayed or that I had my hat on? Exactly. You know. We got to get past religious boundaries. Yeah, and, and legalism. Yeah, that, yeah, that's it. The legalism, legalism is, is, it, it stifles you. Right. You can't function and be thankful for somebody doing something outstanding in your life, you gotta, you know, yeah. and that's yeah, that, that's unbelievable. And that, in, in being able to 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 impart in my kids and and give positives when they were playing sports, you know, and they still are playing, being able to impart in them and uh, and 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 to let them kind of guide and go into the sport that they right. want to go into, not right. where I want to go, and I to can't live through my children. Right. I have to let them flow in how God would, would, would prepare for them and encourage them. Yeah. You know, I remember buying all the baseball equipment because I said, man, you can make some money <laughs> playing baseball. I ain't got to hurt your body too badly. Yeah. That's a good, you get into that, you're going to do some good. But mm -hmm. they both strayed away. Yeah. And, you know, they didn't want to play baseball. Yeah. So yeah. I said, well, I did my best effort. I'm yeah. not going to worry about it, but I just encourage them. You know, that's that thing of let me just, let, Lord, whatever they want to do, let them have fun. Yeah. Let them enjoy what they're doing in life. Be men of God. Right. You know, be young men of God. Transfer and show and, and, and by example that process of how to live this life out. Right. Praise God. We really want to thank you guys for just tuning in. We love your comments. You can email us you, uh, with the email address that's been on the screen, you know, from time to time. So we just look forward to just hearing from you and doing powerful things. We got things going on in the future that we're going to give you uh, more information about. God bless you. Look forward to hearing from you.